In this video, we're going to look at how to solve the Frobenius problem for larger numbers. So let's choose, for example, 5 and 7. Those are going to be the two numbers that we want to find the Frobenius number for. So that is, what is the largest number that you can't form using only 5s and 7s? So let's dive right into it. So first, we need to define a lemma. So a lemma is just a small, it's a step that you're going to use towards a mathematical proof. So, for example, our lemma here is going to be this. All, all, um, so integers, all integers can be expressed as one of the following. Okay, so here's our lemma. So we're saying that all integers can be expressed as either 5k, 5k plus 1, 5k plus 2, 5k plus 3, or 5k plus 4. So basically that means that every integer is either a multiple of 5, a multiple of 5 with 1 added, a multiple of 5 with 2 added, with 3 added, or with 4 added. That's the only types of integers that exist. And we can see how that's possible because let's just list out some of the beginning integers. So we have uh, 0, I'm going to start from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, dot, dot, dot. So, what is 0? Zero? 0 is a multiple of 5. It's 5 times 0. What is 1? 1 is a multiple of 5 plus 1. It's 5 times 0 plus 1. And you can see how that's true for all these. What is 6? Six? 6 is also a multiple of 5 plus 1. It's 5 times 1 plus 1. What is... 9. 9 is a multiple of 5 plus 4. It's 5 times 1 plus 4. So we see how this lemma is true. So now we're going to dive right into the proof. So this problem can be stated as this. So it's basically saying that 5 times some number, and the condition is that A and B are natural numbers. Okay, they can be 0 as well, but then we just get K equals 0, and there's no real point of forming 0 things. So we see that if we plug in a and b, we're going to get some number. So every number we can form using a and b are natural numbers is a possible number. So the highest one that we can't form is the Frobenius number. So let's rewrite this in a different way. Um, I'm going to rewrite this as 5a plus 5b plus 2b equals k. So I split the 7b into 5b and 2b. I'm going to group the 5. So it's going to be 5 times a plus b plus 2 times b equals k. Now we see how this is starting to resemble the 5k plus some number. So let's just do a quick experiment. Let's say let b equal to 0. So then this becomes what? This becomes 5a, and the 2b disappears because b is 0, equals k. So a is any natural number. It can be it's even 0, so we can put in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We can't put negative numbers only. We can't put negative because we can't have a negative quantity of something. So... That means that we can form all we can form all multiples of five. That probably was already obvious to us because given that five was one of our numbers, we can already form that. But it's a good result. So we can form all multiples of five. Now let's say let b equals to one. What does this equation become? Five times a plus one plus two equals k. So now, first thing to note is that no matter what the coefficient of 5 is, since a is a natural number, a plus 1 is a natural number, which means that this whole thing right here, 5 times a plus 1 plus 2, is going to be some multiple of 5 plus 2, no matter what. So, what values can a plus 1 take? Well, a plus 1 can take, um, we have to look at that, we have to see what values a can take. So, a can take uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But that means that a plus 1 can be any number from 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. But a plus 1 cannot be 0, because that would mean a is negative 1, which is not possible. So that means if a plus 1 was 0, then we could say k equals 2. But since that's impossible, we've ruled that out. k equals 2 is not an option. But everything else, every other integer that's a 5k plus 2, is an option, because we just put the corresponding coefficient of 5 in there. So think of a 5k plus 2. Uh, let's say 7. So how do we form 7? We just let a plus 1 equals to 1, which means that a equals 0. That's totally possible. 
So we've, we've seen that we can form all 5k plus 2, but 2. So here's the first number we can form. We're going to go on. We're going to say let b equal 2. Now we get 5 times a plus 2 plus 4. Remember, we're using, we're plugging stuff into this equation. Equals k. So now a plus 2 can take all values except 1 and 0, right? Because it can't be 1 because an a is negative 1. It can't be 0 because a would have to be negative 2. So that means we can form all 5k plus 4. See how our term outside is 4 now? We can form all 5k plus 4 except when a plus 2 is 0. So except, but 4 and when we put 1 in here, this becomes 9. 9. So here's two more numbers we can't form. So I'm going to flip to the back. And we're going to say let b equals, what are we on? We just let b equals 2, so we're going to do b equals 3. And we get 5 times a plus 3 plus 6. But 6 can be broken as 5 times a plus 3 plus 5 plus 1, right? And this 5 can just be incorporated into here. We get 5 times a plus 4 plus 1. So really, this is just remainders of 1 that we're going to be forming here. And a plus 4 can take all values, except can't be 0, can't be 1, can't be 2, and can it be 3? No. Can it be 4? Yeah. So we can form all 5k plus 1, but when you put 0 as a plus 4, we get 1. When you put 1, we get 6. When you put 2, we get 11. When you put 3, we get 16. So we can form all those except those. And let's just test to see if this is true. So let's take 16, for example. Is it possible to form 16 using 5s and 7s? So if we try to use two 7s, no, that's not going to work. We try to use two 5s, that doesn't look like it's going to work. So it looks, we can't do it. So our method is working. And let's just do it one more time. Let's let b equals 4. So then we get 5 times a plus 4 plus a. And that's the same thing as writing 5 times a plus 5 plus 3. So now we're dealing with multiples um, of 5 plus 3. Any number that's 5 times something plus 3. And a plus 5 can't be 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. That means we can form all 5k plus 3. But uh, if we put 0, we get 3. But we get 8, we get uh, 2, 10, 13, we get 15, and 3 is 18, and 23. So all those. And should we do, how many cases have we done? We've done let b equals 1, let b equal, oh, we let b equals 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's just do one more for Let's try it. So let's set b equal 5. So then we get 5 times a plus 5 plus 10. But 10 can just be 5 times 2, so that's 5 times a plus 7. So again, we have a 5k. And since we've already covered the 5k's, we don't need to do b equals 5. And you're going to see that we already did all 5 cases with the remainders. When we did b equals 1, our remainder, so this is the remainder, correct? When we divide by 5, this is going to be the remainder in each of those cases. So we let b equal 0, the remainder was 0. We let b equal 1, the remainder was 2. We let b equal 2, the remainder was 4. We let b equal 3, and the remainder was, uh, it was 1. We let b equal 4, and the remainder was 3. So we've hit every single remainder that's possible when you divide by 5. And after we've done all this, what's the biggest number we can't form? It's 23. So we finished this problem and we didn't have to list out all the numbers luckily. And in the next video what we'll do is we'll generalize this result and try to find a general formula for this so we don't have to go through this whole process either.